Welcome to Bike Life Radio from KWNK 97.7 FM, owned and operated by the Reno Bike Project on Grove Street in Reno. Uh, we're produced by BikeWashow.org. We ride our bikes out into the world here on Bike Life Radio, and uh, we record uh, people, and we talk to them about their bikes and their lives. I'm Kai Plaskon. Right on. Today is the first day of the new year, and we're closing out the holidays. What are the holidays about? Well, family, of course, right? Uh, We often take for granted the people closest to us, but for the holidays, we're reconnecting, right? Uh, So my 11-year-old daughter and I went for a 20-mile bike ride. Isn't that amazing? She's 11, and she went for a a 20-mile bike ride. It took us five hours. At the Truckee Meadows Bicycle Alliance, we often talk about children's safety and families, but we rarely hear from youth about their experiences on the road and what it's like. So throughout our 20-mile bike ride, my daughter Ava and I, we talked about the experience of riding, and uh, we got to see what it looks like from the eyes of a little girl riding around Reno. Before we get to that, the news. In international news, in Vancouver, a guy put a snowplow on his bike. He cut a barrel in half, and uh, it looks like a kind of a V-shape. And then he waited for it to snow. He said it went surprisingly well. He cleared 16 kilometers of trail in less than an hour with his bike snowplow. Japan is making bike helmets mandatory. Only uh, a few countries in the world have mandatory helmet laws. There are no fines, though, associated with the mandatory bike helmet law, only expectations. Uh, Forbes is reporting that the Netherlands doesn't have a helmet law and has no problem with head injuries. In the European Union, 3.4 million people work on cars, and a half a million of them are expected to lose their jobs by 2040 because of increased competition and electric cars. The European Cyclist Federation is taking steps to put those half million people to work building high-tech bikes. Uh, In national bike news, Washington State has approved a $1.3 billion investment in bike infrastructure over the next 16 years, including $216 million for statewide bicycle education programs to reach 90% of students in the state. Here's something to remember next time you hear somebody complain that cyclists don't follow the law. In Pasadena, California, they did a bicycle pedestrian traffic enforcement recently. 63 drivers broke the law. How many cyclists broke the law? Only four. In Chapel Hill, North Carolina, they had 20 car versus bike crashes this year, so they made some drastic changes. They passed a dooring ordinance. That means that drivers who open their car doors into the path of cyclists can be charged. They have also installed protected bike paths, too. The Turkey Meadows Bicycle Alliance has sent this idea of a dooring ordinance to the RTC and City Council for awareness. You're listening to KWNK 97.7 FM in Nevada Bike News from Bike Life Radio and BikeWashow.org. Congratulations to Carson City. They just got their first bicycle-friendly designation, bronze. (laughs) The League of American Bicyclists reports that 52% of riders in Carson feel safe. Washoe County is still in the bronze category uh, and hasn't applied for a new designation, silver or gold, since 2015. The Truckee Meadows Bicycle Alliance has suggested that Washoe County apply for a silver designation this year, and they are looking into it. Down in Las Vegas, Congress has approved $3 million for a protected bike path on Stewart Street and $1 million for Douglas County to install bike lanes, uh, one bike lane on Kale Drive. That's down in, in Douglas County. Also in Vegas, the Consumer Electronics Show is not the typical place where you would expect to see a bicycle because bicycles have been mechanical for the most part, not electronic. But now an e-bike manufacturer, Fifth Wheel, is demonstrating their e-bikes and scooters uh, at the Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas. 
they have energy recovery systems uh, as a high-tech feature. That means that as you're riding along and you stop throttling, then the battery is recharged by the energy of the wheels as you move forward. Nevada needs uh, to get ready for higher car taxes. Uh, why? Well, fuel taxes are declining because there are more electric vehicles on the road and there's a huge backlog of road maintenance and no money to pay for it. So the Nevada Sustainable Transportation Funding Study says just raise fees per mile driven. Uh, so you're going to get charged in your car for the number of miles that you drive. They did have a proposal to look at land use uh, as, you know, is the, the road to a project really the best use of the land and maybe a road shouldn't be used, maybe a project shouldn't be built there because a road is not the best use of the land. But the study participants didn't uh, include any alternative transportation or land use advocates, so they couldn't agree on that portion of the proposal. The good news is that if car fees are higher, uh, well, maybe more people will ride bikes. Out in Pahrump, a 10-year-old has given away 54 bikes. Avery Sampson is her name. She gave away 47 bikes last year. Where is she giving the bikes away to kids? Well, she's doing it at a gun store. There's got to be a downside to every story, right? That's it for bike news from bikewashow.org. A reminder that Bike Life Radio airs on the first Sunday of every month at noon, right here on KWNK 97.7 FM. I'm Kai Plaskon. Right on. Today on Bike Life Radio, it is the holidays, and that means family, right? Uh, so to combine family and bikes, I took my 11-year-old daughter, Ava, on a 20-mile bike ride on Christmas Eve. We ate sandwiches and gummy bears and played on the ice and went to lots of stores and ran errands. Uh, but we also talked about bike infrastructure, and we got a unique perspective on what our streets look like from a child, from the eyes of a child. Here is Ava Plaskon. And today is Christmas Eve. Ooh, it's Christmas Eve, yeah. So you know what the idea is? We don't really have a show for Bike Life Radio. Uh, and so this morning I came up with this idea of, hey, you know what? Holidays are family, and we can do all this family stuff on our bikes. So we're going to document our day on our bikes. We already took Alara to work on her bike. Uh, she bike commuted to uh, Silver Legacy. And Circus Circus, where she's working today. Um, and so we can get info from her on commuting, bike commuting, at the end of the day as we come home for Christmas Eve dinner. And uh, But we're going to document our day together, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a... Uh, what, do, what do you expect? Is it... What do you expect out there? I don't want to fill your brain with ideas, but what do you think it'll be like? Mm, tiring. Tiring. Mm not invigorating yeah. you know uh when you were saying that earlier this morning i said you know you're one bike ride away from a good mood no one says that <laughs> <laughs> we both say it now right you could say it say it you're one bike ride away from a good mood you're one bike ride away for a mood for <laughs> <laughs> You're one bike ride away from you're, a good mood. You're one bike ride away from a good mood. Yeah. Are you in a good mood now? Kind of. Oh, better. Better. In a better mood. Yes. Yeah. See, just talking about bike riding puts you in a good mood, doesn't it? I guess. <laughs> Uh, you're listening to Bike Life Radio, KWNK 97.7 FM. All right, let's go get on our bikes. Oh, what kinds of things do we need? You're wearing a hat? What else do we need? What, what, do, what do we need for our bike ride? I don't know. <laughs> gloves? Oh, yeah, gloves. Yeah. Do we need bikes? No. No bikes. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go. We've got our soccer ball right now. You know what I was thinking about? What? Is that um, like we could have gone skiing today. But that would have cost us a lot of money, and so we're going to have a lot of fun just riding our bikes, huh? Yeah. And saving money. Yeah, I guess. Well, we're going to spend money while we go to the places. We are? Yeah. Like on what? Home Depot, the Boba Place, 
Oh, well, we're not going to go to Home Depot. We're going to go to Ace because it's locally owned. The Bark Store. I mean, the bark bike, Store. The Bike Store. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, we, they should change the name from Bike Store to Bark Store. All right, let's get on our bikes and ride. So we almost forgot something, huh? What? Yeah, what? Water. Yeah. Is water important? Yeah. Water is so important when you ride a bike, huh? How does it feel when you don't have water and you're riding your bike and you get thirsty? Terrible. Really? I'm going to die. <laughs> so, uh, don't feel like you're going to die when you're riding. There's enough reasons to feel like you're going to ride die when you ride your bike. Uh, you don't want to feel like you're going to die of thirst being one of them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look, you're already drinking your water. Wow. It's yummy. What are you doing? Putting on my helmet. You don't want to, huh? No. Why? Because it sucks. Well, what's so bad about a helmet? Because I had a hat on and my hair was perfectly fine and I knew I had to tell me I had to take on my helmet. Sorry. She's smiling and frowning at the same time. It's not a thing. <laughs> yeah, it is. You're doing it right now. Well, I'm not. <laughs> you gonna put on your gloves? No, I'm putting an elephant on my hand. She's getting close to being a teenager. So things like putting elephants on their hands is like cool for teenagers. So It's not... I'm not a teenager. No, you're not, but you're getting close. What do you mean? And that's why you say things like, No, I'm putting an elephant on my hand. Yeah, it's reasonable. Like, you can clearly see me putting on gloves, and you no. asked me what you doing. We're on the radio. Nobody can see anything. Well, you can. Yeah, but it's not about me. Yeah, it is. This is no, your... No, it's about this the is, listeners. This is your show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, should we ride on? Hey, let's ask that lady over there what she thinks of us riding our bikes. No. No? no. Okay. All right, you ready? You say when. You have to look. I <laughs> am. We could have gone, but you weren't looking. No. Okay. Three, two, go. Awesome. Here we go. 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 <laughs> what kind of bike are you riding? I don't know. A Dutch one? Ooh, a Dutch one. That's a big word. It's a, called a breezer. Oh. Why, uh, why is this bike so important to you? It has a mirror. Yeah, it has a mirror. But uh, like compared to your mountain bike, you used to ride a mountain bike, right? And what was the problem with that? The handles were too low, so I, my back would hurt all the time, and I had to go to physical therapy because of it. There's a car behind us. What do we do? I don't know. <laughs> we get over to the right. Yeah. yeah. It's like innate now for you because you're such an experienced bike rider. My legs hurt. Already? We haven't even gone a half a block. Yes, we have. We just went a block. It was a half a block. Okay, a block. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. How are you doing? People, people are friendly, huh? Sometimes. When you ride bikes. Sometimes. Do you want to shift gears? Or are you doing okay? I'm gonna die. <laughs> I'm glad we decided to ride uphill first. What? I'm glad we decided to ride uphill first. You're not. You're not happy about that, are no. you? <laughs> Where are we going? The bank. It's this way. Yeah. I don't like this way. Okay. Well, pretty soon it's gonna be downhill. That's the one good thing about uphills is that pretty soon it's downhill. Well, if you go after, like, back. After back? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to go after back. When? Later. When? We go back after the, after the, after the after. After back, right? Yeah. We're not going that way. It should say. Yeah, it's a nice day for biking, huh? Nice day for walking, too. 
gosh, we've like been riding our bike for less than a minute and already two people have wanted to talk to us. That's kind of cool, huh? Yeah. If we're hey, like driving it... a car, people are like, ugh. They're like, ugh, yuck. I don't talk to them. They're riding in a car. Huh. You don't ride a car. You drive, drive. a car. Oh, thank you for the correction. Go back to kindergarten. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're, do you know what we're riding right next to each other? Do you know what this is called? I don't know. It's called riding two abreast. Oh. Yeah. I'm going to get in front of you. Because there's a car behind us. And they can't pass us because we're riding two abreast. And there's cars parked on the side of the road. And no bike lane. Which is lame. <laughs> like, have to have parked car is more important than the safety of my daughter yeah so there's like <laughs> see even that dog wanted to talk to us <laughs> that scared me so bad me too the dog is a really bad dog. so there's all this free parking over here on the right hand side of the road and we could have been hit by a car just because it's so important to everybody to have free empty car parking on the street and that's more important than safety of us what do you think of that i don't understand that me neither i don't think other people understand it either like they get out of their car they park their car and they get out and it doesn't occur to them that they're putting people in danger with this policy but that's for the regional transportation commission they're the ones that make those decisions to put kids and families in danger or not we're almost done with the uphill you're listening to bike life radio from kwnk 97.7 fm today is christmas eve and we're doing some family activities which means riding our bikes around town to play soccer and go to hardware stores and shop and uh, my daughter, other daughter, is commuting to work on her bike. So we're going to pick her up later, but we're going to get boba tea. Oh, my youngest daughter, Ava, I'm riding with her today. And we're starting out by going up a hill on Hunter Lake Drive. And you got a cramp, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, we're... Oh, you need water? Yeah. It's a good thing we got some, huh? Oh, I think we're pausing. We're stopping. Can you make lots of slurping noises with your water for the radio? Why? Because <laughs> it's radio and nobody can see. <laughs> Perfect. Now we're on Plum Lane uh, between Hunter Lake Drive and headed east. And there's a really nice bike lane here um, that eventually ends, which is not good, but it's better than what was here. There uh, used to be like four lanes of traffic and people would go 60 miles an hour on this road. And now uh, they, so they did what's called a road diet and they reduced the lanes and they put in some bike lanes on each side of the road. Um, they put the parking up against the curb, which is pretty typical, and then the bike lane right next to the, between the vehicle traffic and the, and the parked cars. Uh, the only problem with that is that then the bike lane serves as a buffer to protect the people getting out of their parked cars. And that's really not the purpose of a bike lane. The bike lane is not a door, car door lane. Um, and it doesn't make people feel safe. Uh, luckily, my daughters are pretty adept at riding, um, so it doesn't really make them nervous. But for a lot of people that aren't as, you need to shift, kiddo. Shift your bike. Uh, I'm riding with my daughter today for Christmas Eve, and uh, we're doing some errands together. She's got a new Dutch bike. We rode up a hill to start, and that kind of gave her a little bit of a cramp. I'm thinking we should stop by some bike shops and say hi. 
What do you think? Why? Say hi to who? Well, I don't know. Maybe we'll say hi to Chris, Kirsten at the Reno Bike Project. Who's that? He's a guy who uh, does bike packing. So he puts all of his stuff on his bike and then he goes and rides out into the wilderness. Huh. Does that sound neat? It sounds hard. Yeah, it's, you know, it's not very hard if you're not trying to go super fast. And if you're in good shape like he is, it's not very hard. It's more fun. Huh. And it's very freeing. You can do whatever you want because you have all the stuff that you need. Hmm. Kind of like you have your soccer ball, your lock, you have some water. Do I have my soccer ball though? Yep. Your soccer ball's back there. Now the bike lane is ending after about a mile and we are out in traffic in what's called a Shero. Cars are going 30 miles an hour and we're going 15. So that doesn't feel very safe. There is a sign back there that says we can use the whole lane, but cars, drivers don't see that and they don't care. They just think we're being rude. We are still on Plum Lane and uh, the bike lane ended for like one block and we were in a Shero. It ended for one block just because having a bike lane there might inconvenience drivers in some way or another. And so for one block we had to be in traffic just because drivers might be inconvenienced by, our, by having a bike lane there. Hey, let's go right. There's a bike lane there. All right, now I think, I'm not sure what street we're on, maybe Arlington. And uh, I checked my heart rate and it's 113, 114, which is a lot higher than my resting heart rate, around 60. So I'm getting some exercise, which is good and healthy for us, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Do you like to, your dad to be healthy? Yeah. What about you? Do you like to be healthy? Yeah. Good. Sometimes it's sometimes it's not fun to be healthy. Really? When you're like doing something that's healthy, it's sometimes hard. Yeah. Like really hard. And not fun. But other times, most of the times, it is. I guess. Can you imagine how uh, how like? unfun or not fun it is to not be healthy yeah. yeah not being healthy sucks yeah yeah can you scoot over to the right a little bit thanks hey we're gonna go down to lakeside drive uh there's a beautiful ride on the lake there here come on crossing over four lanes of traffic here on oh we're on plumas and some, one of the things that a lot of people don't know is that all our roads, including Plumas, are way over capacity. That means that you could fit way more cars on there than you have to or than you need to. Um, and so they can put in things like protected lanes. They can, there's enough room to be able to fit that on almost every single road in Reno which is an incredible opportunity that we should be taking advantage of for the safety of the public. And if the public's safer, then they get to, uh, then they get, they'll ride more if they don't feel like they're gonna die. Oh look, there's the lake, Ava. Do you know what lake that is? No. Yes. I don't know any names of lakes. You don't know any names of lakes? No. Ver... Verdi. Verdi Lake? Yeah. Nope. <coughs> Try again. The Vinkle Winkle Lake. Vinkle Winkle Lake? Yeah. How about Verge? Ver Virgin. Ver Virgin. Ver Virgin Lake? Ver <laughs> no. Verdi. No, you are, I already said there was no. I don't know. Virginia. Oh, Virginian. Virginia. Oh, Virginia. Virgin. <laughs> Vir <laughs> Virginia Lake. Well, that's not a very good name. What? Why? We just think it should be like Reno Lake? Yeah. Because we live in Reno, not Virginia? Yeah. One of the things that's interesting about driving 
is that, you know, bike riders always complain that it's uncomfortable for them, but it's also uncomfortable for drivers. It's uncomfortable, uncomfortable for drivers to be around bicyclists because they're worried that the bicyclist is going to fall and they're going to run them over. That's not fun for drivers either. Hey, look, uh, Virginia Lake is frozen. Can we stop and crunch the ice? Yeah, stop and crush the ice. Sure. Well, they, they were in like a rush to pass us. I don't know why they're in such a rush. All right, you ready to crush some ice? Yeah. All right, we're gonna stop our bikes and throw rocks into the lake and crush ice. There's a soccer ball in the ice. Oh my God. We're doing another water stop. You're listening to KWNK 97.7 FM. We're out riding our bikes around Reno uh, with my daughter. And we decided to not go over to the Reno bike project because we'd have to cross Virginia Street, which has no bike lanes on it. And it's not very safe uh, for me and my daughter. So we are turning around and we're gonna skip the Reno bike project for now, unfortunately. Um, but that's what happens when you don't have safe bike infrastructure. You can't go visit the places that you want to visit or the people that you want to see. Sad, huh? Yeah. Well, we don't really need anything from the bike thing. Yeah, we don't need any bike stuff, do we? No, we already have a lot. We already have a lot of bike stuff? Yeah. Okay, all right. Good point, all right. Hey, there's another bike rider. And we came across another short little bike lane that went from the pepper mill over to Moana, which is kind of cool. There is a bike lane that goes from the pepper mill to Moana and uh, right at where Moana Springs is, where they're gonna put in a pool. So that's kind of cool. There's, but the bike lane ends right at Moana where there's a four lanes of traffic and a turn lane, an unnecessary turn lane. Uh, like a freeway here and on any normal day it would probably be impossible to cross because there's so much traffic but this is Christmas Eve and so there's not nearly as much traffic um, but uh, you know there's four lanes of traffic and free parking all along the street that's completely unused and uh, there's no bike lane so, which is unfortunate because kids are gonna want to go to the pool and there is no bike lane to go to the pool for kids. Meanwhile, four lanes of traffic and a turn lane for cars. It's a ridiculously dangerous. It's another benefit, I guess, of going for a bike ride on Christmas Eve is that there's not as much traffic out. Now we're at Peckham and I'm not sure what this street is that we're riding on, Baker. Uh, and there's no bike lanes on it either. What's kind of nice though is that the speeds are slow. And so since the speeds are slow, it's a little bit safer to ride a bike. And that's the plan that the Regional Transportation put Commission has put in place, is for bike riders to be on these side streets and these to be the designated routes because the speeds are slower. So what do you think of riding on, on this street? I don't know. What do you mean? I don't know. Do you feel safe? Um, not really. Yeah, you go ahead, okay? Because there's a bike ride by, or a car behind us. Yeah, she. we'll talk to her about why she doesn't feel safe in a minute. It's my daughter, Ava. Uh, there's no bike lane. There's a ton of free parking here. We're on a side street, Baker from Moana to uh, to some malls over here near Kitski. And we've ridden over here quite a few times, uh, but we're going like I don't know, seven miles an hour, and traffic's going 25. So, and then we're backing up traffic behind us because they don't feel safe going around us. It's unfortunate. And then she doesn't feel safe, which makes her not want to ride her bike as much anymore. 
So, Ava, this is my daughter, Ava. Have you thought about why you don't feel very safe? I mean, there's no bike path. Um, the cars are just, I don't know, they're just coming out of nowhere. And I just don't feel like cars respect us as much going down this road. Yeah. So maybe that's something we can change, huh? Maybe. What do you like about riding right here? Um, there's the downhill. It's not as hot. Um, the breeze is just on my face, but it's not as safe. Yeah. Still. But it feels nice though, doesn't it? Yeah. Which way are we going? I don't know. Which way should we go? Let's go straight. I guess, I don't know. There's not very good, that's a good point. There's not really very good signs for where to go in a safe way on your bike. Like, there's no real indication of where we should be, huh? Yeah. Looks like we're gonna have to go out on Virginia here. All right, well, let's get, get ready. Well, I don't think there's any bike lanes here on Virginia, so. We'll have to be hyper alert of uh, our surroundings. Now here we are on Virginia Street. Not even an inch of space could be dedicated for micromodal on Reno's main thoroughfare for some reason or another. Now we've crossed over McCarran going south and there is a bike lane here, which is nice. At least it's some painted, dedicated space. Traffic is not too fast, which is nice. Um, and so at least we've got some dedicated space here. That's between McCarran and it looks like uh, Meadowood Mall. Uh, but as we know, Reno's bike network is very, uh, haphazard it stops and starts all over the place so you're never consistently safe or you never have a consistent route and we've only gone a block here and it looks like the bike lane is already gonna end uh, already so we're gonna be back in deadly traffic again how does this feel to you kiddo it feels really scary really? Uh, you know, we're in a bike lane, so I don't really know what else to tell you, except you wish it was protected, huh? Mm-hmm. You're going to be okay, kiddo. It's all right. All right, now we're at five below, aren't we? Hold on. Wait. No, come here. <laughs> what? You don't, you don't want to talk about it? No. Why? Because. Oh. Well, we've just stopped to go wherever we want, whenever we want, huh? Because we're on bikes. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go, come on. You want everything in here, don't you? No, not everything. Hmm. What? Here, tell me, what? That was really scary and I did not like that. Yet. <gasps> oh! Ho hopefully, you know, as a parent, one of the things that we can do, even though it might be scary to ride on the road for the kids, is that we can take them to fun places so that you know, the ride might be scary, but maybe the destination makes it worth it until we have better bike infrastructure. Look how cute this is. What did you find? A Squishmallow. Squishmallow. And they're only $5. Oh my gosh. That's not a lot for a Squishmallow. No? Especially at five below. Hmm. Are you trying to convince me that maybe we should get that? Yeah. No. Let's look at this. I'm you know, let's get some soap. We don't need soap, we need conditioner. Oh, conditioner, let's get conditioner. I don't think they have conditioner here. Really? Let's look back over, oh, here you go. All right, we brought our own bags, so now we're not using plastic. Is that a good thing? Yeah. No. All right, let's go. All right, let's go. All right, shopping stop one, done. Unexpected. I below. Well, they don't know where we've come from. 
So you're, you're noticing that people are staring at us? Yes. What do you think of that? I don't know. Does it make you feel special? No. And you think they were staring at us because we're riding our bikes? Yeah. Hmm. Well, anyway, we're almost to our next destination, which is the bank and grilled cheese sandwiches. You ready? No. Oh. You want to go home? Yeah. We're here, though. Why would we do that? Why would we turn around? Well, we can go home after the grilled cheese sandwiches and cake pop. Okay, sounds good. You ready? Get your bikes. Let's go. All right, let's go. You're listening to 97.7 FM KWNK. Uh, I'm Kai Plaskon. Right on. I'm listening to Bike Life Radio. It's Christmas Eve. I'm riding around with my daughter, Ava. And we are uh, behind Smith Ridge Park. And they're talking about putting in a parking protected bike lane. That's where they move the parking away from the curb and they put the bike lane between uh, parked cars and the curb. There's quite a bit of traffic on this street, but it's not that bad. And uh, when I told Ava that, she had a question about it. Like, uh, what did what did you have to say about putting a bike lane on this on this street? I don't see many bikers going over here, like like none. So, and there's more in other important places that need bike paths than just this street. Yeah, like what? Um, Tar. Do you know where? Um, like by the Atlantis. Uh -huh. And street. and Target. Yeah. On the way to Target, on the way to Atlantis, Pepper Mill. We need those type of bike lanes and bike lanes that go to Reno High. That's important on the way to Swope. So. Yeah, that's a good point. There's, they kind of need more bike lanes everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Well, they're talking about putting a protected lane here, so it would be protected by the by parking, which is nice. And there's a lot of people who live over here. Unfortunately, it kind of stops and ends uh, between uh, Virginia on this street behind Smith Ridge uh, Center. We're gonna find out the name of this street right now, I think. Oh, Peckham. We're, we're coming up to Peckham. Peckham has bike lanes on it, so it would be somewhat connected, which is nice. Um, and so that's a, a, a potential point for connectivity, which is good. Because you can go to Smith Ridge, to Kitski, and that fills a gap in the bike network. There's somebody behind me right now. There's whole, totally like a whole nother lane of traffic that they could go around me in, but they're not doing it. So we just had frozen yogurt. And now uh, we're at another bike lane end sign. For some reason, the bike lane has to end again on Peckham at Kitski, which then Peckham turns into four lanes of traffic for one block. And it's more important that there be <laughs> four lanes of tra traffic than even a single bike lane for one block. This is the more ridiculousness in the design of the road. A reminder, this is Bike Life Radio from bikewasho.org. All right, Ava, so now we're on a street that with a speed limit What's the speed limit? Can you see it up there? 40. 40 miles per hour. And what are we protected by? Nothing. Yeah, we're protected by nothing. Painted a lines. Line. A what? A line. A line. <laughs> well, you're protected by dad. Dad is riding next to you, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's not crash into this trailer that's parked in the bike lane. You can go ahead, honey. Got to go out into traffic here a little bit. 
it's one of the problems of having <laughs> parking next to the curb is people can block the bike lane with their giant vehicles. You're listening to KWNK 97.7 FM Bike Life Radio, uh, sponsored by the Reno Bike Project. Well, one of the things that we don't normally do on Bike Life Radio is visit big box chain stores about bikes, but we're in the neighborhood of REI, so we're going to pull in here and check it out. I don't even know if you could really consider it a chain store or a big box or whatever. Um, They'd probably take offense at that. But here we are at REI. They have bikes here, honey. All right. What's your name? That's fine. Uh, my name's Alex. Alex. And uh, we're here at REI. They, they wouldn't let us do any interviews here without corporate approval. Oh, so yeah. I have to okay. find other people uh, <laughs> that, that don't work for the store. You, know, you came in uh, with your bike. And uh, uh, what's going on? I did. So, yeah, just round, uh, mounting a new wheel set. Um, definitely time. This is a, it's a great little bike. It's been fun, to, been fun to work on. But trying to show it some love. And you moved here from somewhere. Yeah, I live in Colorado. I'm a, I'm a travel healthcare worker, so I'm working at uh, Renown Medical Center. Uh, just started about a week ago, so just yeah, get my uh, you know checking Reno out and get an idea of the, what what the town has to offer. And why are you commuting on your bike? Uh, because I love bikes. Bikes are the best. And they uh, <laughs> they make your day. And uh, so you're commuting on it. Uh and what do you think so far? Like you're doing it in the winter even? Well, I haven't started commuting because I just moved to town, but uh, that's the plan. I, I live less than a mile from Renown, so it uh, kind, of, kind of seems silly to drive there. And, uh, you know, it's just a, it's a nice way to get a little exercise, kind of force that into your day every day. Yeah, What's it's it good. like riding in Colorado? Uh, it's amazing. I'm uh, primarily a mountain biker, so there's no shortage of mountain biking in Colorado. It's everywhere. Great mountain biking, uh, lots of great maintained trails. It's just uh, something that uh, I feel like is kind of a passion of, you know, a lot of Coloradans. So it's it's really easy to find good trails there. Do you have a favorite bike story for Bike Life Radio? A favorite bike story? Uh I mean, I wish I could think of something, but... Uh, favorite place to ride, even. I mean, honestly, you know, I love uh, just road tripping with my mountain bike. Uh, I took, a, like, a six-week mountain bike uh, road trip last summer. Just went around the Pacific Northwest and just linked up as many uh, IM, IMBA uh, epic rides as I could. Um, just finding, finding those great big rides and uh, each state that I went to, went to Idaho, went to Washington, went to Oregon, went to, uh, you know, part of California. Um, yeah, probably put in the six weeks, probably put, I don't know, maybe five, 600 miles on my mountain bike, uh, you know, on some off days, I'd go out and trail run or just, you know, go for a hike or whatever. It's just, I don't know, I find mountain biking is just, uh, it's a beautiful way to, to see the landscape, be able to link up a lot of miles of trails and uh, just, yeah, it's a good excuse to just go see new places. Yeah. All right, well, I'll let you get your bike fixed and welcome to Reno. I hope you enjoy it. Awesome. Yeah, I appreciate it. So far, so far, so good. I think uh, probably get out of my mountain bike today because it's just a beautiful day. All right, thank you. Cool. Have a great yeah, day. Thank you. So we've been riding through Midtown on a Shero. Uh, went into a Freestyle Clothing Exchange, which Ava said is her favorite store. She loves it. <clears throat> but now we're riding in the Shero. Somebody's speeding past us, even though we're supposed to be holding the whole lane. And they sped past us to get to the stoplight, which is right in front of us. And now they're stopped. So a message to drivers. Uh, if you're stuck behind somebody, just be patient and wait. Because you're not really going to get anywhere any faster by scaring the bejesus out of somebody on a bike.
so we were just sharing the lane with uh, other cars, and we're gonna ask Ava what she thought of that. Hey, Ava. What? I'm over on the right, honey. Um, we were just sharing the lane with traffic. What did you think of that? I don't know. We were in the traffic with the cars, no bike lane. Oh, I didn't realize that. Oh, she didn't even notice, wow. Now, what do you think of this? This is okay. Yeah? She says it's really good. We're in a protected bike lane now. It's protected by parking. So she feels really safe. That should be the guide for how to build bike uh, infrastructure. Would an 11 year old feel safe on it? Traffic is so slow on Virginia Street that it's we're moving like the same speed. We're about to catch up to the person who sped past us in the in Midtown in the Shero. Now we're in downtown Reno at Second and Virginia, where they ground up the bike boxes that are here for no reason. There were bike boxes on Second Street. <clears throat> hey Ava, come here. So you see over there where the green paint is? Yeah. They were used to be bike boxes there to protect bicyclists and they ground them up. I remember that. Why is there not a bike box there anymore? I don't know. They they don't like bikes so much that they angrily ground them all up. Mean, huh? Yeah. All right. Who them up? The city. Why? I don't know. That's stupid. Why would you put a bike bo box in the first place if you would just grind it up there? I know. It was protection for people. Look, they're, they're, they could use a bike lane. There's some people who are riding down and they don't have a bike lane to go in. Let's go they talk to them. They have a bike lane. They did. They ground it up. Yeah. Yeah. So then tourists walking by said they used to have a bike lane here. And they were like, what happened? So the, uh, the pawn shop down there, um, they, uh, they didn't like the bike lane because they said that people couldn't bring their TVs on their bikes to go and bring them to the pawn shop. Wait, what? Yeah, exactly. And so uh, the, the pawn shop didn't like it. The, the, look, there's a guy riding his bike the wrong way down the street. We've seen like six bikes downtown since we've been here. Not a single bike lane. Um, yeah, in the liquor stores, they didn't like the bike lanes because people couldn't pull over like really fast and get their alcohol. Like, and, and that's what we're doing in downtown Reno. Just drive through, get your alcohol, drive away, or, you know, not a friendly place to be healthy on your bike. What do you think? This is real caca. <laughs> this is real caca. Does it feel safe? No. Do you think that downtown Reno should feel safe? Yes. You do? Yes. You don't think, maybe, maybe a dangerous, dirty downtown is what we want in Reno. Yeah. <laughs> All right, people, let's go. Those people in the liquor shop, or like the people that didn't want the bike lanes are, wait, I think I'm saying it right. Po poto? Pawn shop. No, no, no. Poto. It, it's in Spanish. But. Oh, oh, that. Yeah, you're calling them a bad name. Yeah. Yeah, you shouldn't do that. But they are. <laughs> yeah. They care about their business more than they care about safety. Yeah. Safety. And, and that's what people want. According to the placemaking study, people want a safer downtown. That's like their number one concern is a safe downtown. Meanwhile, nobody here cares whether it's safe or not. Or at least they're not, they might say they care, but they're not doing anything to make it safer. I record it. So this is 97.7 FM uh, KWNK Bike Life Radio, and I'm Kai Plaskon here with Ava Plaskon. We're riding around on Christmas Eve together. 
and about to go, uh, we're in downtown Reno, and we're about to go get Alara, Ava's sister, and Ava wants to just talk a little bit about bike infrastructure downtown, so you can go ahead. So, um, the people downtown, so they, they, as you know, they dug up, they grounded up the, the bike box and the bike path, and it's stupid because, like, the pawn shop was like, no, bikes, people on bikes can't carry their TVs over to the pawn shop or whatever, and, like, pull over really fast or whatever, <coughs> and, like, at the liquor store, they were like, you... They can't pull over really fast to get their alcohol. And I feel like the city, they're caring more about other people's unhealthiness than they are about people's safety. And it's not very, like, it's it's stupid. Very stupid. And it's just, like, me and my dad are going down and we want to pick up my sister, but there's no bike lane. And I just, it's just very stupid. So, I just wanted to say that. So, yeah. Bye. You're listening to 97.7 FM KWNK. We're done with our day. I'm going to turn on my recorder or my watch to record our distance. Hey, Alara. We just picked up Alara from work. What do you, uh, what do you think of bike commuting? It's all right. It's not, it's not, it's not that great in the winter time, but it's okay. It's not too bad, huh? You got to be prepared, huh? Yeah, it's not too bad. Okay, let's go home. You, you've had a long day at work, huh? I've yeah. had a longer day. Yeah, and so then, like, maybe when we get home, tell me how you feel Dude. after we get there. Okay. Okay. All right. And then, like, think about you know how the how the bike ride changes your mood or in a what positive or negative way. Okay. Okay. All right. Love you. Love you too. Okay. We're riding away. Right on. KWNK 97.7 FM. I'm Kai Plaskon. Right on. You're listening to Bike Life Radio. We're on uh, Fifth Avenue. And oh, cross to the right. Look, it's green. Ah. And we're going to get in the protected bike lane on Fifth Avenue. Be careful how you bike. That's the advice from Alara. And now they're having a bike argument about who has to stay farther away from who. So we just passed Fifth and Arlington, and that's where we're planning on doing our uh, bike ride, family friendly bike ride through Reno be the first one of its kind to fund the bike alliance and to fund bike advocacy statewide so that's our plan anyway and hopefully uh, it will work but uh, fifth and Arlington the reason why we chose that intersection is because it's got uh, dem- a good demonstration of protected infrastructure see when you ride a bike, you get to talk about lots of stuff with I your family. I talk about a lot of stuff in cars, too. Nah, not as long. Yeah. And, and usually you're on your phone when you're in the car because no, you don't no, have to use you. your phone. No, that's you. No, that's you. Yeah, yeah, that's no. me, too. No, whenever I'm driving the car, you're almost on your phone most of the time than me. That's right. Yeah, when you're driving, I'm on my phone. No, but and when usually I'm not driving, I'm not usually on my phone. Yes, you are. Yeah. I always have to tell you to get off your phone. Yeah. And, and now your hands are occupied, and, and so you have to talk to me. And then I usually tell you to get off your phone, That's right. and you don't listen to me. Right, and we don't have to have that argument here. because yes, <laughs> Why do we have to argue about it now? Because you think you know everything. On our bikes, we don't have to have the phone argument. Yes, we do. Why? Because it's... What do you think of the fact that there's no bike lanes at your high school? I think it's terrible. I talk to kids... I talked to a kid who rode his bike, and he said that it's really scary and that he doesn't have a bike path. And I asked him, do you think you'd feel a lot more safer if there was a bike path? And he said, oh, definitely. It'd make me feel a lot more safer. And I said, okay. And I did a survey on Instagram, and I 
asked some kids, I even asked some like car drivers, and they said that they feel like, well the car drivers said that they feel like it'd be a lot better. So then they can see the kids a lot better and then they don't have to like feel afraid that there's gonna be like a kid that pops out of nowhere. The same with the bike riders. It's hard for them to go past cars and have to look behind them at the same time. Because whenever you look behind yourself while riding a bike, your bike usually slips off into like the middle of the road or something like that. And then you get really scared because there's a car like going at least 15 miles per hour behind you and you gotta like swoop, swoop back in. I've almost fallen doing that. And it's really scary. Yeah, and if you have a bike lane, then you don't have to look behind you as much, huh? No, and it's easier to get into uh, into the, uh, what do you call it? Into the parking lots and stuff because you can just wait until cars pass by instead of having to look every single moment and be in like cars telling you like to get off the road and stuff like that. Like you don't belong, huh? Yeah. I think, I think a lot of the drivers who park on the side of the road are gonna be upset. I mean, does it, do, you, do I really care about that? No. It's either kids safety or some like truck driver or car driver gets to have the road all to themselves. I don't really find that fair. Especially when people like to store their cars on the side of the road. Oh, that sucks. The road is meant for everyone and not just for you. Store your car. I don't think it's right that the what, Washoe School is ignoring kids safety. Because I mean, you're supposed to make sure a kid feels safe when they're in your uh, school zone. Like, you know, it's just like a shooting. Like, kids should be able to feel safe in their school. Same with bikes, it's just the same. Kids don't have to feel like they'll get run over by a car every single day. I don't think they'd, they're very respectful of bike riders at all anyways. Either way, like one time, I was riding my bike on the Idaho Park Road and some lady was yelling at me. She's like, get off the road. Like, this isn't a safe area and stuff. You shouldn't be riding your bike here. I'm like, I should. And I, yeah, I know. I've, uh, and I like, scared out of my mind. She was driving super close. And I'm like, I didn't even say anything. But I knew like, I can ride my bike wherever I want. Probably not on like the freeway or anything because that's scary, but I should be able to ride my bike without people telling me to get off the road. Like, that's dangerous, especially when you're talking to me on the road. Like, it makes it even da more dangerous because I'm focusing on you instead of the road. And do you think that's, that's fair to me and my sister? No, not at all. And like, see, I'm riding down Hunter Lake right now and I see people storing their cars. I see like five different cars can fit one more in that driveway right there and I drive by this one house right here too they got like 10 different cars one big huge truck on the side of the road an ambulance that they don't even really use they don't even work for the health department either and all these cars they don't even use any of these cars they just store them on the side of the road even when I'm driving a car I, I feel very scared to drive past these because then I feel like I'm gonna hit them and I don't, but it's scary. It doesn't feel good. Well, it looks like we're home, so. Yeah. Interview over? Yeah, interview over. Good job, Alara. Thanks. You're listening to Bike Life Radio, KWNK 97.7 FM. It's Christmas Eve, we're riding around town with our wall. I got a crash into my own car in my driveway. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and now Alara's crashed into my own car in our own driveway. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's it for our Christmas Eve ride and uh, review of uh, what it's like for a kid in Reno to ride, commute, and, and try and enjoy themselves as families and how terrifying it is. I'll go open the garage, girls. Nice job. We made it home in one piece. That's it for Bike Life Radio, the New Year edition, the first edition of 2023. We record out in the world. We talk to people about their bikes and their lives. 
Bike Life Radio is made possible by KWNK Studios in Reno, owned and operated by the nonprofit Reno Bike Project, and produced by the Truckee Meadows Bicycle Alliance, bikewasho.org. I'm Kai Plaskon. Right on.